Alright, I've seen this one before. Let's skip over that. Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX. What do you want to bet there's a licensed soundtrack to this one? Gonna put a little bit more editing into this, so if there is, I'm probably gonna cut the audio off to it. Checking memory card slots, so a demo. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Rides Hoffman bikes. What do you know? He didn't ride somebody else's bikes. He's got his own kind of bike. I don't expect him to ride someone else's. What happened? <laughs> ah, God. Jumped out of the demo. Try this again. Second time I saw that screen, I still didn't read it. Don't know what the controls are. All right, let's try again. Oh, I hit two player. That was the problem. Yeah. I hit two player and it wasn't the second player, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just killed him. <laughs> God, you know what? I hate this faux punk music garbage. <laughs> I don't even know what this is I'm listening to. And neither do you, because I'm going to cut the audio out, but... <laughs> oh, look at that shit. Oh, I landed that. Come on now. Uh, this is probably like the 10th or so Tony Hawk S game that I've played on this video series. Just so many of these things. I mean, really, it was the snowboarding games that started the trend. But it was really when Tony Hawk Pro Skater came out that the, um, the trend really started. And you started seeing these, you started seeing bicycle games, you started seeing uh, roller skate or like inline skating games, so many different types of this kind of same general type of gameplay. Although honestly, the snowboarding games were usually different because you had a track you had to follow. This is more about just performing tricks and ranking up scoring points instead of a combination of tricks and uh, making time what you saw in like uh, Cool Borders or SSX or whatever. Oh, what, what's happening? Oh, okay. <laughs> People must have gotten really tired about this, of this kind of stuff by this point. I mean, Tony Hawk Underground was popular on, like, the PS2 era, but... But there's only so much of this ex almost exact same formula. Large environment this to place in, though. Large environment. At least there's that. I guess with the BMX, though, you're gonna have to. Escape from Monkey Island. You know, I remember the title, but I don't remember this game. Oh, it's a PlayStation 2 game. Hmm. Pirates are mean. Pirates are pond scum. Yikes. 
uh, LucasArts game. Clearly the end of the PlayStation 1 era here. This is in 2000? Or 2001? I don't, I don't know when this disc came out. I'll have to check the front of it. There was a good date on it. But they were moving towards the PlayStation 2 games. The second biggest monkey yet I've ever seen. But since this is a PlayStation 1 demo disc, you can't have a PS2 game. So they go and they place these videos on here. Unfortunately, the quality of the videos just doesn't really hold up to what the PlayStation 2 is actually capable of. You know, after watching that whole demo, I still have no idea what this game is about. Pirate game with monkeys, and it's got something of a sense of humor. That's all I got. Oh! Legion, The Legend of Exc Excalibur. It's a PlayStation 2 game. Visit the um... This was a game I never owned, but it was a game, it was one of the first PlayStation 2 games that I rented. In fact, it may have been the first PlayStation 2 game that I rent, uh, rented. My local video store didn't have PS2 games until they closed and then somebody else opened up in their place and they carried PS2 games. And this was, I think, the first one that I rented. And it's, it follows the, roughly anyway, follows the story of uh, King Arthur. He's sort of like, goes from him becoming king and is a bit of a little dickhead. Hunting down, hunting down his sister Morgan for killing his father. He had like... Galahad and Guinevere and all those characters in this. I think the game might have been alright. <laughs> I do remember one thing that was notable about it was back before the PlayStation 2 launched, I think it was before the PS2 launched, Next Generation Magazine had had some feature where it talked about the PlayStation 2, how all the games that you had seen up for it, up to that point, were really not all that impressive. You had like the Summoner and stuff like that, which weren't really that big a deal. But then you had some games coming up for it in the not too distant future, which were really going to demonstrate what the machine was capable of. And for some reason, this game was listed among them. The other games may have been, um, I read this article a few times. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 was one of them, which was a big next-gen step. This title has not yet been rated. I think there was a there was a canceled PS2 game in there too. Was it The Lost? Might be The Lost, which is a good name for a game that never released. Draken 2. Alright, so the first Draken was a, a PC title. Pretty popular one, too. Although I think the series has um, faded away. I don't know if there was another Draken game after this one. But I think it was... Oh, you know what? This might have been one of the games on that list I was talking about. Because it was... It was a, Draken was a big PC release. And the PlayStation 2, Draken 2, was, like, pretty much the same game, only it looked better. Well, I mean, it was a sequel. Never played the original. Uh, 
I haven't played this one in a long time, so maybe I should give it a try. Might be worth checking out, you know? I think it's an RPG. Okay, it's Shadow King. Continuing with the trend. PlayStation 2 game. It is kind of a shame to see that the PlayStation 1 was pretty much on, at the end of its life here. I mean, of course it wasn't. The PlayStation 1 would continue to be manufactured and games would be released for it for a number of years, but at a certain point it's all just greatest hits releases and sports games. So the PlayStation 2 was at the end of it being really like where the AAA games came to. And like six months earlier than this, you'd see big releases. And now it's just like, oh, well, we got, we got another uh, X Games sports game on it. And then you have a bunch of demos for videos for PlayStation 2 games. Never played this. Don't know what this is, really. The early PlayStation 2 was something where a lot of games... Well, I mean, of course, nobody, or at least nobody should anyway, have every single game that came out for a console. I know there are some people that do, because their collectors are psychotic. But the early PlayStation 2, even though I, I ended up getting a PlayStation 2 fairly early after it released, not like launch day or within the first couple of few weeks or so, but within the first few months, I was able to get a PlayStation 2. And... Despite having the machine, there were a number of games that were notable releases for it at the time that I just missed out on because I uh, didn't have the money. <laughs> Stuff that I wanted to get. Like, I would have... Probably gotten a few of these games. Oh, okay, so we're not looking at a PlayStation 2 game here. At least if we are, it's a hideous one. Hmm. So some Disney... Atlantis, The Lost Empire. There was a Disney movie about Atlantis around that time. Yeah, it's a Disney. Never saw the movie, never played the game. Don't really care to. Oh, when we're back at the beginning, that was... A disappointing demo disc. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to see, at the time anyway, it would, it's nice to see what PlayStation 2 games would look like, even in compressed motion JPEG format of PlayStation 1, to get a view of what PlayStation 2 games would look like, because 2000 or 2001. When, I, I'm losing track of what year this is supposed to be or when the PlayStation 2 released. But back then, things were different. You didn't have the internet, or at least not the internet in the form that we have it today. A new game is coming out. I can jump on IGN or GameSpot or YouTube or whatever, and I can load up. I can load up videos to see what that game looks like, and high definition and all that kind of stuff. Back then, I remember the first um, the first video I had downloaded off the internet for a video game had been WWF SmackDown. So SmackDown, the PlayStation 1 title. And with a 56K modem, it took like 15 minutes to download this video. And it was like five seconds long. And that was the best way that I could look at what a game looked like. And even with the PlayStation 1, it was still compressed video. So it wasn't really a time where most people, anyway, could get at videos of gameplay. I don't think um, GameSpot or IGN or anybody had decent videos or anything to download of gameplay anyway. So that just wasn't something you could do. So I had to more or less wait until these discs start coming out with video of PlayStation 2 games for me to even know what PlayStation 2 games look like in motion. 
so that was something of a big deal. But the fact that there's only one actual demo on this is... would mean that, like, the demo disc itself would be disappointing. Of course, this was late in the PlayStation 1's era, so in the early days, I've made note multiple times that a getting a new demo disc was a big deal for me because I couldn't afford games in large numbers. So, for a month, I would get a demo disc, and that would be what I played. Like, rentals and stuff were an issue, too, issue uh, possibility, too, but rentals were still expensive. How the hell did I even afford the machine to begin with? God, what the hell's wrong with me? My priorities are wrong. <laughs> the, you would get the demo disc, and you got a bunch of different gameplay experiences. And I would play the demos over and over again, because those were where I could get games from. As the years rolled on, though, the demos became less of something I relied on for my gameplay, because I ended up getting a larger collection of PlayStation 1 games just by accruing them over the years. So each demo disc was less and less important, unless it had a very specific game that I was excited about. By this point, I guarantee you I popped this demo disc in the first time. Went through all of these once like I did here, and then took it out and never played it again. Until just now. So... Originally I started this series because I felt very nostalgic for the demo discs. And by this point, that's not the case. I didn't even remember this one, and I haven't remembered a few of the ones that I've played through. Uh, later on in this series. That will all change once I make the full transition over to PS2 demo discs, or at least for the official US PlayStation Magazine discs. There's a couple of not OPM uh, demo discs for the PlayStation 1 that I've stumbled across that I want to give a try on this uh, video, but it, they tended to be one game long. But those demos could last, last a while. Uh, Next Generation Magazine dropped a couple of demo discs for, like, um, uh, what the hell's that RPG called? Or an RPG for the PlayStation 1. Remember that demo, I played a few times, and the demo was, like, 45 minutes long. But once I get the PS2 demo discs, the whole thing started over again, because I was able to scrap together the money for a PlayStation 2, not on launch, but fairly early, and I landed in the same boat, where I couldn't uh, afford any games because I completely ran out of money. But I had a PS2 uh, or uh, official PlayStation Magazine subscription by a certain point because that was something that was worth spending your money on. And it got me 12 demo discs and 12 PS2 demo discs early on. It was a godsend. It gave me something to play. But anyway, I'm, let, I'm rambling on for a while now, so how long are we into this video? 18 and a half minutes. Oh, jeez. Long time for one freaking demo. 